it again. It'll take a minute to load anyway. It's working, but. There we go. Wait, can you see and hear us now? Can you hear me now? We have all these screens. We're like, what? Is it working? Is it working? Well, we'll have to, like, there we go. Okay, Tony with the Y. So sorry about that. If I had known no one could hear us, we, we would have stopped, fixed that a long time ago. Okay, Oops. All right, so just so you know, we're live now. I guess like the first half we'll have to, uh, I guess we'll have to like re-explain everything. Yeah, just, so. So uh, we're doing, so I'm CM Veritas and this is CM Dragonlark. Um, as you'll notice, we are not CM Jello Shaker. Jello Shaker is extremely busy today, so we thought we would come in and uh, take over. Now, right now, what we're doing is we're doing our characters from Dungeons and Dragon Larks, which uh, airs every Friday at 4.30, right? Or yes. 4? Yes. Um, sometimes it'll vary. you got to keep your eye out. It depends on how busy people are. Because we gotta do have to drag quite a few people into that live stream, so sometimes one person or another might be more or less busy. But, um, yes, and uh, Veritas is going to be drawing her character, Hobbledad, who is a... Druid, an elven druid? Yes, he uh, is a high thing. elf, elven druid. Yes. And he does actually come from a noble house. And I forgot it right now and I wrote it down because it's very, very fancy. Um, yeah, I, I wrote my character. I completely redesigned him because we are actually using the Dungeons and, Dra Dungeons and Dragons starter set. Mm -hmm. And for those who have never played Dungeons and Dragons before, they do come with... Uh, characters that they can use. So like Oda is using one of the pre-made warrior sets. Um, is anyone else I think are using? I'm not sure actually. I know they might be. I thought that, no, I'm not sure. I have to like look them over again. But they might have like tweaked some of the ones that were already <laughs> in there. Um, I don't remember so many people, uh, like people's descriptions. I was just thinking that today because I want to draw people's characters and I was just like, I don't actually know what they look like. This is my first time ever playing Dungeons and Dragons and I'm like in charge. I'm the the dungeon master. Is that the... Yes, you are yeah. our dungeon master. So for those who have any experience with Dungeons and Dragons or any like Pathfinder or any of those kind of pen and paper RPGs, uh, we gave... Seeing Dragonlark, the hardest job of all, and that is to run one when she's never run one before. Yeah, so I'm a little bit, I'll, I'll usually ask them a lot of questions. So what I'm doing now instead of drawing people's characters is I'm drawing, like, the little, like, monsters they attacked. Like, a couple weeks ago, if you guys didn't, haven't um, tuned in, uh, they came across, one of the first things they have to do is fight some goblins, but I really like making uh, the characters, uh, they have to fight more of a a challenge emotionally for those who have emotions hey some yeah <laughs> i'm looking at you veritas i my guy has a lot of emotions they're just internal they're angry emotions they're not all they're... well you know he is kind of a uh, he's a little bit of a a nature uh animal rights kind of guy he doesn't like people he doesn't he really doesn't like people um <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah. So there was, they had to keep going back to this cave because for a while we couldn't get everyone together. So it would only be like two of them trying to fight the cave and the cave was too hard for two of them. And so um, they'd run in and they'd kill some goblins and they'd come back out. So when I, they were all there, they were ready for going to like go in the cave and kill them all. And the goblins were having like a memorial service for the goblins they'd already killed. And it was just sad. 
So uh, one of the goblins, they did a, I can't remember what the role was, like charm or something. They tried to talk to them and be like, oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> and so one of the goblins like ran away and the other one was just like crying. And so they kind of befriended him. But he kind of got carried away by the flood that they um, accidentally triggered. So I'm going to draw that goblin that they murdered with the flood. Wait, he, 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 he was standing in, it's not our fault he was standing in the rainy. Singing, singing sadly <laughs> to himself for his fallen friends that you guys murdered. <laughs> so much. They had name tags. She did. She went through the trouble of naming all these characters just to make us a little more guilty about everything that we're doing. <laughs> Whoa, his face is moving. Yes, I do that a lot. So I get into like a mode where I'm like, oh, I want to do this. And then I realize that that position doesn't work for this particular spot. So that changes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll have to like, so sh shifted just about 18 minutes in the, the day. <laughs> that was, that was exciting. So yeah, um, when I'm doing like Photoshop work, I love the fact that when I mess up something terribly, I just cut it and move it and fix it and do things like that so I don't have to like redraw entire sections again and again. So, does anyone do any fun things this weekend? I don't know, what does Jello Shaker normally do when... <laughs> um... She just, she takes requests sometimes stuff. Let me see, I don't know. Well, I mean, I think we could talk a little bit more about your character's motivations. Why is your character so angry? Hey, Popcorn. He's angry because he sees what people do and he thinks that they're all making stupid decisions. And let's also remind everyone, so my character, he is an elf and they have very, they're very long lived. And my character is about 120 years old so he's basically starting to get that kind of, what is it called, ennui, where he ha he's basically just now kind of out of ad adolescence. He's a young adult in uh, the, I guess, the grand scheme of a elf's life. And he's been traveling to try and get to know the world. And the more he learns about this world, the more he just hates it. <laughs> You know, it's like no one, you know, you got poachers, which he hates. Oh my gosh, if you're a poacher and he comes across you, you are, you will never see the light of day again. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, he's just, he, he's seen some things, he's seen some stupid stuff. And then with that long life and wandering around, you know, he's still fairly young though for an elf. So he hasn't completely learned to detach himself from people. So this few people that he does care about, you know, they die so quickly around him, especially humans, since humans kind of populate this world like freaking ants. <laughs> you know, they die in, let's say, you know, 30, 40 years, because it's like sucks. Unless, of course, you know, you've found like some long longevity thing, and at that point, then you might be evil and you're using blood magic. And then he's like, but now I have to hate you for using blood magic. Oh, God. Why you all make this hard for me? Uh, also, so as I mentioned earlier, I name all the characters. If you guys have names or if you'd like to see your own character names in the episodes of Dungeons and Dragonlarks, you can leave us messages. We have a forum post. Um, and I can name NPC characters after you. Yes. They might die, though, just as a fair warning. And I give no promises about their personality. I give, like, most of the characters weird personality quirks that end up happening, but... Really, she just does it to make sure it... I want to say that it's almost like... Ensure that we can feel as guilty as possible while... While murdering, yeah. While murdering them, yes. While... Like, uh, the the Red Brand Ruffians are the ones who've taken over, like, the town they're in right now, and they're bad guys. And last week, they went into the town to, like, verse, like fight them. Well, last week, the week before last. They were there fighting, though. They wanted to kick the town back. They were pretty sure of themselves that these guys were evil and it was okay to murder them. But then it, it turned night, and the 
Fred Brown Ruffians, I've decided, have like a, a debuff on them at night where they're all like extremely intoxicated because they've been, they've taken over this town for quite a while and they've grown like kind of lax in their judgment. So they're not as like professional as they used to be. So they're all really drunk. And so when they fought them, the ruffians were kind of just failing at life. Like they were just kind of flailing around and not doing a very good job fighting them. So it was like they were so much more powerful than the red brand ruffians that they started feeling bad. Especially when the red brand ruffians started screaming and crying for their lives and begging them and stuff. I didn't so, feel bad. Of course you didn't. My guy was just, well, join us. Become a member. We are much better than... Well, they were, like, being, like, disemboweled and stuff like that by Turfing's character, too, so... Well, yes. But we can And use... someone set them on fire at one point. Uh, I'm not even who that was. Wasn't it John's character? Maybe it was John's character, because I don't think it was me. For once, it wasn't me setting them on fire. Do goblins have hair? Uh, I think they do. Who's our, who's our resident beast master who can tell us if goblins <laughs> had hair? I, I keep on getting confused because in like Pathfinder, they are insanely adorable. Or no, I'm thinking of kobolds. Here's his little shirt with his little name on it. Wow. <laughs> She's Charlie. giving him a name, so... Well, I'm drawing Charlie, because... Charlie? Remember? That's the... You don't even remember their names. I... Uh, that was the one that... The the goblin that died at the, the river. Oh. I don't know. There's a huge body count for my characters. I gotta keep up with this. You know who's catching up on body counts really fast is a Turfing's character. He is. He, he, he was getting crits left and right the other day. That's right. All right, I guess I should like pay attention to the rest of this character because uh, he's. Uh, I guess he should be wearing clothes or something. So I think. No, he does wear leathers. He does wear. Uh, he can wear leathers. That's right. Although at the moment I'm drawing a blank on what his clothes should look like. Of course. So let's let's put this on a different layer just in case I look at it and go. That is bull. <laughs> so he is an elf, so I'm going to assume kind of. Let's see. Maybe a tunic type thing going on here, maybe. I don't know. This has got kind of a weird pose thing going on. I don't know. I'm just going to give him like a little. Maybe he's been stressed out and his hair's been falling out. <laughs> really? He's stressed. Well, his friends are all dying, so... This is true. His, his friends are all dying. Oh, that's right. I have this button. Ah, I keep forgetting. Uh, we'll go here. Let's see, we'll go here. Lots of... This is too much, too much uh, color. There we go. Wee! Okay, that's not working. Why is this thing all switched around? I forgot how to switch this. Let me switch this back. That does not do me any good. Let me fix this. Why do you keep doing the under one? Why is the settings on this thing insane? Tools. Ah, well. Options, close zone. Enable flick. Yes. Where is it? I know there's a thingy for that, and I can't remember what it's called. What is this thing called? Color picker thingy. Interface, color. So, uh, anyone else play? Hello, popcorn! Anybody else play uh, any, really, any pen and paper games out there? We do like playing a lot of games. Y 
yes. Darn it, how do I... F I remember I fixed it on my other computer and I can't remember how I did it. I do not know what you're trying to do. So, there's this cool thing in Photoshop where as you're working, you can pick a color. Now the problem with this is when you pick a color, it's only doing the under one. I want it to pick this one. Oh yeah. I forgot how you set it so it only picks that. Oh, there we go. Perfect. There we go. I knew it would be something stupid. <laughs> Stupidly easy and I'd be like, I know how to do this. Ooh, wow, your Pathfinder game is not going to go very far. Is one of them at least a dirge bard? At the least, which by the way, tons of fun playing a dirge bard. I played a, a 2.5, is it 2.5 or, I don't know. I played a game where I was a dirge bard and I kept causing pain for my, <laughs> my, my, uh, Companions. Alright, so, you know what? I'm gonna see. He's gonna be wearing some, a shirt, like a nice leather thingy. Some shirt. Maybe, maybe I'll have a, a little bard thingy. Or not for me. We haven't started yet, but we're gonna be sure to be different. We're each pretending to be a fighter, a wizard, and a cleric. Wow. That's going to be amazing. Please tell me that you're going to give us reports on this amusing. So you're going to have a bunch of bards pretending to be a fighter, a wizard, and a cleric. Again, I hope somebody's a dirge bard. Because <laughs> at least then you can do some stuff. So one of the things I always forget in, uh, in, uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons is their elves have kind of very angular features like honestly I don't think his features are even angular enough here <laughs> trying to make his eyes even more kind of upturned eh, it's not working eh. <laughs> So, any other games out there that you guys are uh, playing? Could be fun. Doesn't even have to be uh, uh, Pathfinder or D&D. There's a bunch of them out there. There's Shadowrun. There's GURPS. Uh, we also have... Uh, there's all the White Wolf games. Uh, what else? I already forgot what my character's wearing, so I'm just making up crap at this point. That's the spirit. I mean, if anything, it could just be kind of his robes, his daily robes, because I'm sure he doesn't want to walk around constantly in big old huge... Uh, I mean, it's actually not that huge. He can't wear a lot of leather stuff without incurring negatives, so, you know. Some barding. Not barding. That'd be for a horse. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. Yeah. I'm right. gonna check out this monster that I'm trying to draw because I might be drawing it wrong. Are you looking for a... What are you looking for? Well, last week, we, our last time we played, we discussed Nothics. Nothics? Said there was a Nothic. Yeah. Nothic. Yeah, I found him. Yeah, okay, this is right. See, now I could do this, and then I could put it on the screen, and you can look at it there, too. That's true. I can. But I've already... I've... For those who can't see, I guess I could do this, and you can all see. So this is a Nothic. La last time we like we played, um, someone had mentioned that there was a Nothic um, somewhere. That's what they'd heard. Huh. I have no idea. Yeah, because it was the one that... Uh, I think was it... John rolled on it? Someone rolled a knowledge thing off oh. of the description. Yes, that was John. John. 
something that was oh he was I think he was questioning one of the ruffians about what was in the the manor that they were like hanging out at. Oh, well, that's so right. They're in a scary scary manor. Because yeah. what could possibly go wrong in a scary manor? I don't know. I've a uh, I played a game where we ended up in a very scary manner, and uh, and for anyone who's played the uh, Rise of the Rune Lords, that's what that was, and uh, bad things happened. We had a player almost, almost get one-shotted out of nowhere. Let's see, I don't know, how is this looking, guys? Looking okay? I'm trying to do this very quickly, and my quickly is not nearly as quick as quick as I need it to be. Yours looks, that looks really good. I nominate you to do that for everyone's character. For everybody's <laughs> character? Yeah. I used to do that when I uh, played, there was a Star Wars game, and I literally sat down and I drew like this, kind of this big elaborate uh, hero poster of all of our characters. Funny thing is, if you ever played in the game, we are the worst heroes on the planet. I mean, I was a uh, Jedi, use uh, a Force-sensitive ex-Jedi who had gone dark side and was kind of slowly making his way back to the light side. We had some weird, what are those little guys? They're like, they wear the little hoods and they have little eyes, little light eyes. Well, one of our play one of our my pl friends who was playing one of those guys, who just liked to spray people with like this slime, and everyone and all of our characters just kind of guessed what was in the slime, and it was toxic and terrible no matter what you did, and he whoever he sprayed had to make like a constitution check. Yes, I am gonna give him hair. So I usually leave hair kind of towards the end. But as you can see, I kind of started doing kind of a line or an idea of where his hair is going to go. <laughs> Very long and flowy, because as we point out, you know, if you think elves, you kind of always imagine them with long hair. And yeah. I think that's just that, uh, I, because I remember reading in uh, Tolkien, he explained that the reason why all the elves had long hair, it was kind of a, uh, uh, how to put it, it's like the kind of a... Uh, attraction thing like the longer your hair and the more elaborate the braid the more attractive you were or something like that it was weird it was cool now i don't know if that works for uh for these guys but i guess here i guess to give an idea of what i do for hair it always is kind of crazy so am i on a different layer yeah so i always do it on several layers um for those who don't know who are maybe learning, so I guess this is Make Stuff Monday, here's a trick. Um, if you don't know where to place the beginning of your hair, what you do is you measure your nose. So from the tip of your nose to the middle of your eye, you measure here, I don't know if you can all see, and then you go one, one, two. So it should always be two lengths, uh, the two lengths of your nose. Now, obviously people are different. Um, if you're doing, let's say, a portrait, People, unless you know you're a model, people don't generally stick to completely that uh, particular uh, measurement. But I mean, if you're do just learning faces or you're doing faces and you need to draw, let's say, a really pretty character, whatever, it's always two lengths of your nose up, and then for the rest of your face, just so you know, it's measured, and it's always from here to here. So the tip of your nose to the middle. You go here, and then you measure to the bottom lip. So you should always be able to measure to the bottom lip, and then from the bottom lip to the bottom of the chin. So that's a kind of a nice thing, and when you're doing like circles, you can do the same thing on paper with circles, where you just draw a circle, and that's your measurement, and then you can go up. And you know, the same thing kind of works the same this way, where you go from here. That should also be the length between, like you can see right, right now, my, my eyes are slightly close together, so I go through. But generally, it would be same here. Length of your eye is the width of your nose, nose, out. Yeah, it's just it's a nice trick if anyone's learning or and doesn't know what they're doing. Very cool. Yeah, and then um, same thing can be said for the rest of the body. Um, generally, 
you will the body is usually measured by the length from the top of your hairline to the top of your the bottom of your nose so if you really wanted to draw someone and you had no drawing talent whatsoever you could draw an entire body with just measurements and you know you take one inch and then you measure this exactly to that point to that point um, again, this only works if you're maybe drawing like this perfect model because humans don't come in perfect models. <laughs> Unless you're Henry Cavell, because that man's just beautiful. Oh, who's he? He is currently playing Superman. Oh, that dude. That man just does not look real in real life. Like, I've, I've seen him twice in real life, and he just looks like he's made out of marble. Like... Michelangelo had sat around one day and went tick, 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 and just fell in Henry Cavell. <laughs> but yeah, Interesting no, it's, description. Yes, yeah, just this. It was weird. It, it, it is very weird. And I'm not that I, anything else. This, it was kind of freaky to see him in person and just see this person who. I'm, I'm just so used to seeing, you know, like stars and stuff. When they're done up, they're done up and they look really beautiful and you, they're at events. And then, you know, you see them at Target and they look like normal people. That I can deal with. Not, I see you and you look like a Greek god. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to look like a Greek god in real life. Put on a baseball cap, don't shave for a day, and you'll be fine. I won't go crazy. <laughs> Hair. Yeah, so I just kind of give an idea when I'm doing hair. I kind of go crazy at first. Um, start with the darkest color first. And now, generally, I do imagine my character. He has. I think I wrote. Oh wait, no. Did I write he has? He has white hair. I think I wrote he has white hair. Just because I thought white hair always looked cool. So we're like wispies. This can be crazy. Apparently, it's windy wherever he's standing, majestically. You should not do this, but I'm doing this unless you should really wait to do this kind of like cutting around stuff because you don't want these harsh lines. You just want to kind of let everything kind of flow. Um, but all right, so moving on, um, then you can start messing with things. You know, okay, that's way too dark or light. See, so then you can start, you know, moving some lights, colors. Oh no, this is not working. <laughs> uh, uh, as you can see, I use like billions of billions of different things. I don't actually use a lot of these. Some of them are by other people who are kind enough to share their stuff over the years. Um, I kind of have them because I like them. They look cool. I don't use a lot. And then I have mine that I created that are somewhere in that mess of stuff. Oh, not that one. That is not the one I wanted. Um, let me go back to the top. There we go. So I like this brush, and I forgot who made these brushes. I got this one years ago, and I've been just importing it over and over again for the years on the various versions. But I love it because it has, it's really good at creating that kind of oil painting look. In fact, I, uh, I did a one picture, and it confused my mom because my mom was like she was dead set that I had painted it in oils and I'm like no mom let's let's see I had done it all on computer she's like wait how did you do that and I'm like easy or stop you see but now it decorates my my bank card because I figured what the hell let's see let's see if I can find it one of the ones I had done to confuse my mom. These are old. These are all old. Okay, you guys can't see it because it's on the other screen. <laughs> but, uh, uh, da, da, da. Oh, next page. 
Yeah, I did this entire series of, uh, I want to say fey paintings, because I kind of was doing the fairy court. And where the hell did it go? But, uh, so while I'm looking, though, okay, this will be easier. Just do this. I'll go here. Oh, wait, there he is. No, that's not right. What do you like to draw? Um, cute things. Very Dragons, cute. animals. That's true. That's right. Lots of cute things. They're always so adorable. Where? Is this it? No, it was a different one. I don't know. But uh, hilariously enough, I did end up making a uh, an oil painting version of this character for my friend. So there is actually a live version, which looks much better somewhere. I don't know where. It's hanging on his wall. Oh, it's kind of this one, I think. Although this does not look good. This does not look good at all. <laughs> oh, well. It does look good. It looks much better in person. <laughs> but, uh... A horse. Very cool. Ah! No way. Go back. got kind of an 80s vibe going at the moment. I don't know if I like this. This is very... It's kinda, too late. <laughs> it's... It looks like he should be, uh, doing his own rock, you know, There's ballad. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe that's his hidden talent. He's secretly a bard. Yeah. Druid bard. Are you going to give him hair? Oh, through PS? Uh, oh, through Photoshop. Wait, what was the question? What's... Mm -hmm. I've lost what I was talking about. What, what was through Photoshop? That's what she's using right now. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm doing this through Photoshop yeah, right now. That's what you mean. Oh, yeah, all of them except the last one. That last one was actually an actual oil painting. And there is, uh, you know, I sat down, I drew it for a friend of mine. He uh, commissioned it, and it's hanging on his wall now. Very cool. I cannot paint anything. I come out looking nice. Don't feel bad. I, it's been so long since I've done oil paintings. I used to kind of do traditional art exclusively, but it is very messy and very expensive. It's expensive, yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't have enough money to even practice this enough to get good at it, so. Yeah. Well, it sucks. I, I actually have a lot of very expensive brushes and stuff, but oil paintings, so as a kind of word of caution, is very dangerous because if you don't have the space to do it, the fumes alone can cause a lot of respiratory issues. Mm -hmm. And one of my big differences to switching over was the fact that I was having trouble breathing and I realized it's because I was sleeping and living in the same room that I was doing all these paintings. Yeah. So even with the windows open, it wasn't enough. And yeah, it was a... Uh, I'm like, you know what? It's just much easier to do it this way. If I do paint it all now, it's like I'm outside. Yeah. And then, of course, all the elements just kind of land on the painting <laughs> as I do it. Make it more 3D. <laughs> yes. There's a leaf. There's a thing. <laughs> it gets pretty bad. It's funny. All right, so uh, I want to soften up his face. And just because you guys, I wasn't able to, we weren't able to get, or at least we thought we were on. I'm going to try at least be on a little longer so you get, you guys at least get your full hour. Yeah. Alright, 
so I just want to make sure I get... So this is... I love how I went through the trouble of drawing his ear, kind of outlining his ear, and you can't even see his ear. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's totally got like that 80s vibe going. He just needs to break out into a ballad. Aerosmith needs to sing it. Looks like he's getting ready to use a spell on someone. He is. He is getting ready to. I kind of imagine that off in the corner, he's watching this poacher, and he's like, "Oh no, you didn't." I will. I there's like a tip up here, and I need to. Uh, I I will get in there. I need to. You can still see the tip, so I'll probably go in in a minute and. I want to get more of this base done. Um, which, like when I'm doing this by myself, usually one of these drawings can take about a week, but that's like sitting down drawing every day and doing maybe three hours. I try not to do too much more than that because I am kind of one of those believers that it's always good to step away from the painting for a while. Like I give it a good 24 hours because a lot of times you get kind of trapped in the image that you're looking at and you don't see the flaws. So stepping back for 24 hours, working on another painting, like I used to have like several paintings going at once because yeah, I would just get stuck. And then especially with oil paintings, you don't want to be sitting there doing that because then like half the paint, you'll paint the painting and then you can't just cut it out. I mean, you could try and do like the wash it out or paint around it, but it never works so well. It just becomes a mess and the, the, then the canvas gets kind of, starts to deteriorate because of the extra turpentine and crap that's all over it. It's just, it's not a good thing. So that was something I kind of started doing with oil paintings. And then uh, it's worked pretty good for me in the sense of when I'm doing it digitally, you know, I save myself a lot of pain. But the great thing about digital is, you know, it's digital. As if you're watching this earlier, I can just, I guess you weren't watching that part. Take the head, cut it off, move it to the side if you need to, shrink something, whatever. So let's go ahead and draw that, put that in there. Um, oh, I also did a, I did a Requiem painting, too. I think I have it posted up somewhere. I don't know where, though. I posted it on Steam, because I was like, we don't have any Requiem art. So I did a, a wallpaper type thing. Yeah, that actually looks really, really cool. I saw that. I want to do more. We have no music. Maybe that's the problem. I've become very fixated on this one monster. <laughs> I'm not making him look scary at all, even though he looks really terrifying in those pictures. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm gonna make him look cute. Help. A sweater and a scarf will help. He's fine. I need. I'm gonna put like something in the background. So at least it's make some noise. Right. Some tiny noise. I've turned down so you can hear us. That seems a poor appropriate. That's fair. Is it really loud? I don't know. Here's some medieval music <laughs> to go with our kind of medieval fantasy theme. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone have any like favorite uh what do I say? Like I think oh I messed up already. This is way too long. His arm is way too long. Apparently his arm stretches. But that's why we do this. Here we go. I don't like his his hand being that old, huge, so I can just do this. And go pew. There we go. Best part is then I can go in and then replace all this stuff.
Oops. Super cool. Thank you. He's always like that. He's very cute. You should show the class. The nerdy Nothic? Yes, the nerdy Nothic. You should show the class. Here, I'll take a screenshot and put it on my Facebook when I'm done. Not Facebook, uh, Twitter. Um, so last week we talked about a, like, they gleamed from one of the, um, red brand ruffians they took captive that in the evil manner there is something called a nothic which is a creature of magic um it's bad news an aberration neutral evil uh and there's one that's gonna be in like in the days ahead they might they might encounter it if they go they take certain paths so i'm drawing a nothic and it doesn't look scary <laughs> i guess it kind of looks scary I don't know, I'm shading it in still, but I'm kind of making him look sort of nerdy, so. Because from what I read, Nothics are supposed to be creatures. I think it's Nothics were creatures of magic who, like, uh, are they like kind of mages who took too much magic and then it warped them into something bad. So. So I'm like, so he's like a nerd. He's like probably reading all the time. Like, as someone who reads all the time, I feel like I can say that. But. <laughs> So you're gonna say if you were in the D and D universe, you'd turn to a Nothic? I hope not. I wouldn't necessarily just read magic books. I guess I read their books to keep myself safe. Come on, you know you would read at least a few. Yeah, but not enough to turn into this. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Maybe there's a. I'm not really power hungry. I'm not like a super power hungry person in general. But what if it meant more dragons? Yeah, but in the D and D universe, dragons probably would stop being fun real fast. <laughs> it could be an issue in uh, the D&D universe. Because uh, dragons are intelligent creatures. I mean, they're fun from the, the DM's point of view, but not quite as much for the party. You know, you could just make it nice. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I could. I, you could just, could. you know, make the creature, the dragon, really nice and helpful... All the good things will happen. Right? 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 Totally. Yeah. I can tell you, though, if you're... Um, if you're in a, a game of Dungeons & Dragons that I have control of, fighting the dragon is probably not a great idea. Because... It's like, this dragon I will, def I will defend that dragon with my life. <laughs> this dragon, you just, you know... So, uh... 10 billion HP points... <laughs> Yeah, really, this this creature's unkillable. You should give up now. Run away! I think I would find other ways for people to get around it, though. I think this would kill it. Alright, so I think I should combine these at least for now. Because I, I think I like this robey thing going on. Alright, put this. Whoa! Because this, this computer does not like it when I have several layers open. It goes, no! <laughs> that yes. looks really cool. Thank you. In my life, I just mean just more. More ambiance. Yeah. Let's see, I go. Want more depth, more darkness. <laughs> All the darkness. That's the spirit. I'm gonna assume that he is. Probably, let's say, so we're gonna just throw some of these somewhere. Oh, that's 
reason. Do this. Normally, since I'm not really doing a particular scene in the background, I just want the idea of a scene in the background. Do that. And then go some, uh... That looks super cool. That devil looks like a character card. So some... Here's some trees. Some happy trees. <laughs> happy trees! Happy trees! Yeah, it's kind of the, the fall, so we don't have a lot of branches, but uh, let's do that. The happy tree time. So some happy branches. I'm not sure if I like how Charlie came out. He looks sad. What? Charlie. Oh, is that Charlie? Yeah. It's very sad. Why is Charlie sad? He was sad because you guys murdered all his friends. Well, if they stopped trying to kill us. You invaded their cave. We were trying to save them. We are their liberators. Uh-huh. That only happened after you guys found that one dude. And probably because you guys were tired of me throwing emotions at all of them. Emotions. What are these creepy emotions you keep giving him? Oh, never mind. I need something with a point. There we go. This will work. If only more of you were good guys. <laughs> I'm a good guy, mostly. The only one who ever shows any compunction about murdering everything is John's character. Yeah, well, he always plays good guys. Really cool. Thank you. I'm giving him backgrounds. He looks sort of vampire y. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I wonder why that is. I have no idea. I have no idea why my character of all characters would look even remotely vampire y. Although, who knows, maybe in his future. Maybe becoming a vampire is in his future. We don't know. Life beyond our, our game still has much to offer him. And then he can hate people even more. I feel like the next time we do one of these, if I'm like the dungeon master, I need to like make sure that there's like a lot more... Um, could you guys fixate on like the little things that don't matter? And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing in here about that. Rules of DMing always expect your players to do exactly what you don't want them to. It's like, don't look at that. There's nothing in there. Nothing matters in there. But we want to look. Should I put flowers in the background? Sure. Put little tiny, you can't really see them, but they'll be like little spots of a flower, maybe. You guys really fixate on that, like, pool, too, that cursed pool, and I'm just like, I don't know. I don't well, you said the blood thing. You know, we blood things that tend to say blood, blood, blood all the time. I just Yeah, Otis' character is cursed right now. He just is constantly hearing the word blood, like, chanted in his brain at all times. And when he, what's it, when he sleeps, he has terrible nightmares of blood. So, that's fun. Edwin Moneytons, he is having a bad time. And I make sure his character has this thing where it doesn't like to get dirty. He likes to remain pristine. He's like oh, noble. that's right. And so every time something dies near him, it like just like explodes blood all over him. So it's just like... <laughs> oh, that is so funny. That character's never gonna leave his house after this. He's gonna nope. go home. He's like, never. He's just gonna be kind of the, the, the hermit who just kind of hangs out. It's like, nope, not going out there. Bad stuff happens out there. Alright, so. Alright, let's go, let's I should, go back. I should make it worse. I feel like I should. I feel like in the near future, the curse is actually gonna get worse. So. Wow. That's so funny. So, I just want to point out that, uh, 
sometimes I don't want to say anything, but it seems like our DM might be a little bloodthirsty. No, it's just funny. <laughs> sure. Having too much power. <laughs> uh, I just want to kind of just, just throw that out there that, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's fine. I, uh, no, I, I, I think that there's an issue. I think we need to talk about these issues. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm hmm. Stick on. Oops. Not the intended look. You should show us. Oh, I was just reading the chat. It's like, uh, it said you should show some ears. So we have E3 tomorrow. So if we're all suddenly really quiet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm responding to Slack things. Yeah, E3. E3. Oh, that looks really cool. Thank you. So any, uh... I know we asked this in the other, uh, in the Rose chat, but figured to ask again, you know, is there anything that anyone's really excited to see? Um, are you waiting for? Are you really kind of jazzed about? And that you've seen already that you're excited about, because I think some places are people are posting E3 stuff already. Yeah, I think it was it Microsoft had a out, thing but... today. I won't have a chance to check it until I'm there. <laughs> yeah, same. We're we're out of the loop. We're terrible. We're out of the loop. But there's so much to do. I'm kind of ex excited. I hope that they have some stuff with the, the new Zelda. I'm kind of excited. I, I gotta admit, I haven't played a lot of the newer Zeldas, because they've all been kind of that kind of that cutesy Wind Waker. Yeah. Which is not bad. I mean, I, I, I've played a few of them. They are actually very well-designed games, but I did prefer, like, Ocarina of Time. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm, I'm kind of excited that it seems like they're kind of going back to that with the new one. I haven't really done any, um, I haven't played any of the games, although I had a friend in high school who was obsessed with Zelda and they paid me to draw them Zelda pictures. Aww. Yeah, I heard that Zelda's gonna kind of take over the Nintendo. Which is ridiculous because Pokemon, come on guys. <laughs> what they should do is let you catch Pokemon. They should send out the Pokemon beta to everyone who goes, and then we should be able to catch Pokemon while we're there. I agree. I'm just saying. That would be a great way to, like, I agree. show off their Pokemon. I have been okay. sitting trying to get into the beta and, uh... Just refresh your, uh... Your email a billion times. There's like a certain number of refreshes I think that get you in. So really, no. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, my hopes up. I'm slightly super obsessed with um. Slightly with Pokemon. Really, slightly. Yeah, maybe slightly more than slightly. Let's be honest. But, I mean, it is Pokemon. Can you... No one could really blame you for that. Yeah, Pokemon's the best. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture of my screen and then I think, I think it's almost time for us to... Oh, is it? Yeah, it's oh. past two, so... That's right. So I guess one of these days I'll have to finish my my character. Here, I'll put over here. You'll be named Hobbledod. But uh, so yeah, so that's why I've done in an hour. <laughs> Uh, so this is this was Make Stuff Monday with Team Veritas and Team Dragonlark. Uh, we were making our D and D characters. This is Havildad. I drew a nerdy Nothic. It, it'll come out really bad if you try to show it like that. You could try, but I'm at least gonna see see the dirty Nothic. Oh, it's a nerdy Nothic. Nerdy Nothic. There's her nerdy Nothic. But uh. I'm gonna post it on my um, yeah. Twitter. So I should probably post this one too. Yes, you definitely should. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. It's been great. Uh, we will be. Are we gonna be doing our Dungeons and Dragon Marks today? Um, I think if we, if we do, we'll record it and then still post it on Friday. Okay. I think it just depends. Well, we'll figure it out. Uh, but thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you again. Do you have any other? Bye. Bye.